So George Coleus. Yes. Man, I've been looking forward to having you sit right here in these chairs with me, my man. Great honor to be in this room. Like, I feel the the positive vibe, man. It looks really, really nice. Thank you, really man. Nice. We've been kind of working our butts off up here. Like, I I told you walking up here. I mean, this was basically a storeroom yep. that I just started squatting in, putting drums up here, and they had yep. the merch up here. And yep. I finally convinced them it would be a good idea to move the merch yeah, yeah. into another part of the studio, and yep. we've turned it into our drum lair. As Nick, my my AV engineer calls it the drum hanger yeah yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know i just wanted this to be a fun space where the guys that i meet on the road and at drum festivals like you and i met yeah. can just come we can hang sit here and talk about drums and so i do yeah. i do want to talk about like how we met and you know so i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna tell you my side of it okay. first right okay so um you know we were on this we were on this tour in australia and it was the ultimate drummer weekend yep. and I was out on the road for like, and we were, I think it was like six or seven shows yeah. going around Australia. And we knew that you were coming to, to do the festival. For right? the festival. Yeah. So yeah. Everywhere we went, man, people were talking about you. Right. Everybody was like, Oh man, the, the festival is going to be amazing with George. Right. And so like, I don't know if you know this about yourself, but you don't smile very much when you play. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so I've I'm, been, I was watching these I'm videos. I'm in pain, yeah. Yeah, I was watching these videos and I was like, whoa, man, this dude is intimidating. Thank you. Thank you. Man. Thank you <laughs> I was like, whoa, this is some heavy stuff. And then, and then we saw your <coughs> drums all set up. You know, we got to the festival. Your drums were all set up, Black Pearl, you know, and yep. it's like, you know, it's like, again, intimidating, right? So then I'm like doing a signing. And um, and I had a bunch of people, you know, kind of waiting, you know, we're kind of lined up doing a signing. And I saw you come in, like, holding a yeah. copy of Groove Alchemy. Book, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> oh, because I was wondering, like, how we were going to be when we met. And then, man, when you came up, you were just so warm and genuine as you are. And then Thank we you. instantly yeah. became buddies. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, definitely, definitely. Yeah, because I remember you telling me, oh, man, I love I'm funk. I'm a fan. And, yeah, yeah, I'm a well, fan. Thank you, man. I'm a, and I am as well. So, I, I mean, I never forget these. Like uh, for me, this is like a like a very important side. Like to not forget being a fan and you know embrace music and you know then you know I I also hear stories about some people be a little bit weird and but I mean there's nothing to be weird about. Like I'm a fan and I love your playing and you know then that's it. Like it's very simple. You and know? I love your playing. I mean Thank we you, on that tour at the end of that that show we only did that one show together and we sat next to each other during dinner yeah. and we were just like instantly yeah, buddies yeah, 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 yeah. and then we went and did the lab camp <coughs> outside of athens yes which is a great camp anybody watching this who sees yeah. anything about the yeah. lab camp the year i did it it was me and keith carlock who yes. have done this with keith and uh and you yeah. and so man we just got to know each other even better yes and hanging out sitting at drums showing each other ideas yeah and uh we've been knowing that you were coming here to new orleans for a minute and i've been like yes i'm gonna be there we're yeah. gonna hang out it's gonna man be awesome. thank you so much for the hospitality it's uh, really really amazing yeah so we but, came by your sound check sounded yeah. awesome sounds great and uh i think we're gonna go check out rebirth brass band tonight yes. i'm gonna take yes. you to hear rebirth yeah so you know anybody watching <coughs> this who's like oh man that's I wish I could be there for that hang, to take George to see Rebirth yeah. Brass Band for the first time. That would be killer. Yeah. Be killer. So we're doing that later tonight. But cool, man. So, you know, it's funny, like after checking you out, then I started, you know, picking your brain about blast beats and 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 different uh, different things that you do. And yeah. like, you know, when I'm shedding, sometimes I'll shed a little bit of that stuff and I like come up with my own so ideas. So the video today, I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal this. <laughs> I love it. And I'm just taking like, you know, New Orleans, Mardi Gras, Indian ideas, yeah. da, 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 yeah. but then. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, bouncing that off of you and just having a good time with that. And you've been, I've been watching some of the stuff you've been doing too, like some more groove oriented stuff. And you've also, yeah. you've got a, a fusion uh, trio that trio. you're doing now. Yeah, it's called the Royal Time Machine. Yeah. Um, it's two buddies of mine, um, 
basically is a, is a jazz player and more all all around um, guitar player. He plays with Scott Stapp actually, Yanis Papadopoulos. He's the main guy for Scott Stapp of Creed. So he's been touring like crazy, like me. And a uh, death metal drummer. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's it's very interesting. I just, for me, it's uh, it's an opportunity of a life. You know, I just wanted to play different music and I'm so lucky to be with these guys. And, you know, uh, obviously the band as well, Nile, you know, I, I do what I like to do. I always wanted to do. So I feel very complete right now. Like I wanted to play a little bit different music and I got some great guys, you know, and the band is doing great also. So yeah, things going great. Yeah. And then, you know, several years ago I started playing with a piano trio because I wanted to play more brushes. Yep. And I'm playing with that <coughs> trio tonight, Snug Harbor. And that I feel like that has really helped complete yep. a lot of what I was seeking with the drums. You know, I, yep. sure I hit hard and, and groove out with Galactic, but I also want to play play brushes, interact and improvise. And yep. so yep. I've had a chance to do that with that. And I find it interesting that everybody knows you as you know, one of the m most badass death metal drummers on Thank the you. planet, but yet you love to play groove, yes. funk, and uh, fusion stuff as well. And yeah. I've seen some of the videos, and you sound great. At Thank it. you. Thank you. And you know, it was super fun. Like, I think the the funk song we did for my DVD uh, with the brass guys, you know, I remember I, I sent it to you. I was like, okay, you know, I gotta, I gotta send it. <laughs> So as soon as I sent it, you said, oh, yeah, man, that's great. Welcome to the dark side. <laughs> I will never forget that. I'm like, wow. <laughs> so, yeah, that was obviously I was really, really stressed, you know, and um, these guys wanted to do like one take and uh, we did five takes. We kept the first take. Obviously, my fifth take was the best one. Right. But, you know, I have the best musicians in Greece join me for these, you know, like um, I wanted to, you know, keep the first take so they feel more comfortable, you know. So that was uh, that was great. That was great. Very cool. Yeah. And then I just know uh, when we did those jam sessions too yeah. at the lab camp, it was super fun to have an organ trio there every night and then yeah. watch you sit in playing playing groove stuff yeah. with an organ trio. So yeah. you know, I guess my point of bringing all that up is you know us as drummers, we get yeah. known for a certain thing, but yeah. then we love doing all these other. It's drums. Things. It's drums. It's drums. Like you know, the for me, the more versatile you are, like um, discovering, you know, uh, seeking, you know, other styles of music, and you know, you get more things in your playing and makes you a little bit more unique, maybe. Yeah, and I found interesting <coughs> what you were talking about coming over here while we were driving over here. You were saying you you usually practice six hours a day. Well, since May and because of the trio, I just really want to push my groove and you know, like. Uh, my fusion, let's call it playing, you know. Um, so I did spend a lot of time. Yeah. yeah. Mostly and I'm, swing. Yeah. And I'm envious of that. I'm like, man, I wish I could get six yeah. hours. But and what I found really interesting was that you were telling me, I try to approach it like it's my day job. Yes. And that's really, I think, a cool way that's to That's what I said to myself. Uh, I'm like, okay, you got eight hours a day. To be honest, it's never eight hours. Maybe it's seven, maybe it's six, maybe five at least. But uh, I'm like, that's your job, you know. Yeah. I mean, if something happens, you wake up at ten instead of eight, no problem, you know. But um, I try to keep this approach, and um, then from five and after, you know, like uh, five o'clock and later, you know, I just spend time with my kid, and you know. So, do you find it? <coughs> do you find it that you're more productive if you can wake up and start practicing right away before you start doing things like email and? Yes. returning calls and all that that's for me personally once i start answering email and and texts and calls then the day just gets away from you yes. you got to answer this and you got this person calling so i usually like to wake up and try to start shedding yep. before anybody is waking up like for years i would shed yep. in the front of the bus shed brushes on a brush up pad yeah, yeah. and that's all i got a lot of my brush stuff together but i would wake up before the rest of the band while the bus was still rolling but you were going to say something. No, is it, I mean, I do the same. Like, if I sit down and do emails in the morning with coffee, which sounds great, right? Right. Laptop, coffee. That's the day. That's Done. That's One it. One o'clock, I'm like, oh, man, I did like 300 emails. I'm done now. You know, I, I'm, I don't have the mood to play. Right. I find so, it exhausting. <coughs> like, if I sit at the computer for four hours yes. and deal with all the administrative stuff, 
you know, getting flights, making sure that the backline kit three yeah. months from now is the right backline kit and all that yeah. kind of stuff. <clears throat> and answering, you know, can you make it here for this time? And answering all that stuff that you got to do, as you know, I mean, yeah. it takes up a lot of time. But once I do that, I need a nap. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I'm exhausted. So yeah. I find that I like to try to shed with coffee, like in my pajamas yeah. and my slippers, yeah, yeah. shed with coffee. And then later in the day, you know, yeah. what I've found is, you know what, if you don't answer something, if it's super important, yeah. they'll find a way to reach you. Exactly. Like your manager will call and be like, I need you to respond on this, like yeah. right away. Otherwise, Things can wait until after you practice, exactly. I find. Yeah, so yeah. I try to do the practicing first and then start getting into the administrative yes. stuff. Everything I do come